All this crossed my mind with the speed of a wonderbolt as I stared at Sentinel. His heart had been broken, and not long ago by the looks of things. I sat next to him without a word. If he wanted to talk, he would talk. If he didn't, well, I had nowhere else to be. After sitting with him for a while, he eventually told me what had happened. A week ago, when Trokey and I told him that Lace didn't come to the hospital, he went to see her. Lace had yelled at him that she had a lot on her plate and that she had more focus on her studies. When he asked if she had known he was in the hospital, she had responded that of course she knew. But if she wanted to get into Princess Celestia's school for gifted unicorns, she had to prioritize her time. And it wasn't like he had been critical, right? He realized in that moment that she didn't care about him at all. He broke it off, and his heart snapped in two when she replied with no tears, no begging for him to consider, but with a curt whatever and a slammed door. After he finished, we just sat there in silence for a little while. He eventually broke it when he asked me if he had ever told me about the time that Nightwatch had pranked him. He told me that he was kindling the lighthouse when all of a sudden, the fuel exploded. It caused his forehooves to catch fire and to fly out of the room clucking like a chicken. Nightwatch had come out of his hiding place, saying that he put flash powder in the furnace and didn't realize that it would catch his brother on fire. Sentinel was so mad that he made Nightwatch an alicorn by headbutting him. His relationship with Nightwatch had always been pretty strained. We both started to laugh and spent the rest of the day looking over the horizon. Our friendship began to grow over the next few months. We started to hang out more often than we did before. We started meeting at other places other than the harbor and the park. There were times when we would just sit out on the front porch of my house and talk about miscellaneous things. We had become so comfortable with each other, it was like we were best friends. Lavender even commented on it. Should I be worried I'm losing my bestie? You're not losing me. I kid, I kid. She got a mischievous look in her eye. Besides, that flank. So firm and round and rare. Lavender! What? I'm just saying. If you don't want him, I'd take a crack at that hunk of burning stallion. Lavender! Her words were like seeds, planted in fertile soil. It didn't take long for me to realize that I really had started developing romantic feelings for Sentinel. However, my negativity came back as quick as a whip. He was still hurting from lace, and I had sworn off stallions. Romance was an easy way to break a friendship if it didn't work out. Troki had declared she was still interested. And besides, I had no cutie mark. No stallion would be caught dead dating me. Unless, like Powerhouse, they were keeping me as their bit on the side. All these seemed like excellent reasons to keep my burgeoning feelings to myself. I decided to hide my feelings from him instead, and fought off every urge I had to tell him. I knew that it was a way for me not to get hurt again. A few months later, we started traveling outside of Manhattan. We flew to the surrounding cities of Philadelphia, Baltimore, and Niagara Falls. We would normally fly to these locations, but it was mostly me doing the flying. 
Sentinel was always a weak flyer. He couldn't fly for very long, so he often resorted to cloud hopping and gliding. I had to keep an eye on him to make sure he didn't fall off a cloud. I remember when we first traveled to Ponyville. It was absolutely wonderful. We got greeted by the premier party pony herself. <laughs> she startled Sentinel quite a bit when she popped up in front of us. She threw us a welcome to Ponyville party, and we met every pony in town. The party lasted for a couple hours, until Sentinel and I had to leave. We waved goodbye and went off on our way. The day was wonderful, but was then ruined by an unfortunate turn of events. It was close to evening, and we were a couple miles east of Ponyville, when Sentinel stopped and looked down at something below him. I looked in the same direction he was looking, and saw a stone building that was next to a large field. There were a couple roads going in horizontal and vertical directions. An awestruck look stretched across Sentinel's face. His curiosity was clearly piqued. His wings began to flap at a frequency of a hummingbird. Before I could even say a word, he flew down and landed a couple feet away from the building. I flew after him as fast as I could and landed next to him. He began walking around the property, blissfully unaware of where we actually were. I nervously followed behind him, an uneasy feeling forming in my stomach. I tried to convince him to turn back, but in my mind, I already knew that he wouldn't listen. A few moments later, my suspicions and fears were confirmed. You then, halt! Sentinel and I suddenly found ourselves surrounded by a group of uniformed pegasi, and within a few seconds, we were both taken into custody. We had accidentally trespassed on the property of the equestrian airbase. The soldiers dragged us inside to the middle of the main lobby and restrained us as an off-white suited Pegasus walked into the room. He was dressed in a blue uniform and wore a hat with the equestrian military insignia on the front. Colonel Rumline, what should we do with these trespassers? Asked one of the soldiers. Rumline turned his head toward one of the rookie soldiers restraining us and told him to bring us to the boss. They dragged us to a large room at the end of the hallway. Then, Rumline knocked on the door and opened it. We found out that the boss they were referring to was Colonel Walther, when Rumline called out his name. A loud voice boomed from inside, letting us know that the pony he was talking to didn't like being bothered. Rumline had apologized for disturbing him, and said that this incident needed his full attention. Walther gave an exasperated sigh, giving him the signal to come in. They followed Rumline, and brought the two of us inside the office. A pale blue pegasus, with a scruffy brown mane, walked from the desk and stopped in front of us. He was dressed in the same blue uniform as Rumwine, but had a pin insignia of the Equestrian Air Force and a couple of ribbons on it. He asked us what we were doing on his property and why we were there. We both explained that we came there by accident and that we didn't mean to trespass. Sentinel told Colonel about his insatiable curiosity and tried to apologize for any trouble we had caused. He said that I didn't do anything wrong and asked for them to let me go. The colonel dutifully shouted for the soldiers to take him away. No! I screamed. I tried to stop them, but Major Skybird held me back. 
the soldiers did as they were told and took him out of the room. I tried to pull out of Skybird's grip as many times as I could, but to no avail. A few minutes after they left, I collapsed on the floor, buried my head into my forehooves, and started crying. This couldn't be happening! This felt like a nightmare! Sentinel and I didn't mean to trespass. We had no idea it was their property. I never felt so terrified in my whole life than I was that day. There was only one thing I could do. I raised my head to face Colonel and managed to eke out a single sentence. Please, sir, that there, there, there has to be. Walther's face remained emotionless as I started to cry again. He told me that he was sorry and that his decision was final. Before I could protest again, Major Skybird and Colonel Rumwine took me out of the room and put me in a small jail cell. I realized later that they had put Sentinel in a cell across from me. He was sitting in the middle of the cell, looking down at his hooves. His wings were bound together with metal bands to keep him from flying away. When I got closer to him, I realized that he had streams of tears rolling down his face. As long as I can remember, I was always told that cults were taught to keep their emotions inside themselves and that they were supposed to be strong emotionally. That surprised me more than ever. In my entire lifetime, I had never seen a stallion cry before. I couldn't bear to see him like that. I wanted to be near him and comfort him any way I could. However, the whole idea was to feed us. How could I do that if I was stuck behind bars like he was? I couldn't ram myself against the metal bars without causing the guards to come in and restrain me. So instead, I just laid there and cried myself to sleep. The next morning, Colonel Walther and a couple rookies came into the room and had Sentinel and I taken out of the cells. We remained silent as we were both escorted back to his office. Colonel slowly paced back and forth, not saying a word to us. The room was so quiet that the only thing we could hear was the sound of his hooves hitting the floor. Sentinel and I were starting to get nervous again as it continued. After a few minutes, Colonel stopped and finally faced us with the same stern, stone-faced expression he wore the day before. He still remained silent. It was quite clear that every pony on the force feared him. The young soldiers who were holding us were trying hard not to show their emotions around their commander. Those next couple minutes felt like hours as he stood there. Then, Colonel picked up the glass of iced tea that was sitting on his desk and took a sip before finally speaking. He told us that he had made his decision on the proper punishment for the two of us. He told us that even though we trespassed on his private property, he would not press charges on the both of us. Instead, he told us that we would have to pay a 500-bit fine and receive 60 days of community service. We were about to sigh with relief, but held our breaths in as he told us that if he catches any of us goofing off on the job, he'll make our punishment even worse. Each day when we got off from work, we would fly down to the military school 
and perform whatever task Colonel wanted us to do. Some of those included cooking and serving meals for the whole crew, and doing some custodial work as well. After a while, Sentinel and I started to see past Colonel's tough demeanor, and we gradually became friends. He was a stolid, serious pony, but fair and even hoofed. He never overworked us more than what was necessary, or kept us one second past our finishing time. He seemed impressed that we didn't try to wriggle out of our punishment, and treated us with all the respect he gave the other ponies he encountered. It was he who had a hoof in helping Sentinel and I realize our feelings for each other. After a month and a half of community service, Sentinel had told Colonel about his weak flying abilities and asked him if he could possibly buy some flying training. Colonel thought for a little while and finally agreed. Though he has chewed payment, he instead fetched the finest drill instructor on the force, Sergeant H.B. Motormouth. We only learned afterwards that his initials stood for hold fast bucking, not hold on to your butt, like the soldiers told us. Now, when I say that he was loud, I seriously mean it. He would shout at Sentinel, as he had him do plenty of wing push-ups, and running around the track for hours on end. Come on, chicken boy, you call that flapping? Let's go, Sentinel! Keep your balance! Do not look down! Ten, huh? I would watch Sentinel train with Motormouth while I tried to complete my own community service tasks. However, even though he was starting to get better at his flying, he still wasn't able to fly great distances like any other Pegasus could. He isn't able to this day, but it doesn't really bother him. He had already accepted that fact. He had learned from an early age not to let that get him down. It still didn't hurt for him to try, though. That's what I've always loved about him. He's not a quitter. Once he sets his sight on something, he never lets go. When he strode into the building after a practice, I stood there in awe, my breath completely taken away. I started to realize more and more that I was always speechless whenever I saw him. I tried to deny it, thinking that he would never return my feelings. I didn't want to fall in love with another stallion that would hurt me in the end. I decided to bury my feelings within myself so I would never be hurt again. However, despite my attempts, I still found myself getting flustered whenever I gazed into his eyes. Out of all the features on a stallion, I've always been a sucker for a stallion with pretty eyes. My mom had always told me that the eyes are the windows to the soul. And she happened to be right in a few cases. After the relationships I had, I stopped believing that. I was so disillusioned after my breakup with Powerhouse that I didn't believe there was a single stallion with a beautiful soul. On the last day of community service, Colonel called the two of us onto the field. He told me to help Sentinel stay focused during his practice. Sergeant Motormouth stepped out into his full attire and the flight practice began. The test Motormouth and Colonel gave him was to see if he could relay the flying techniques he had been learning for the past month. With the blow of a whistle, Sentinel took off into the air. First, he did a few upside-down turns, and then a few loops to increase his speed. I stared in both disbelief and awe as he completed those moves like it was nothing. 
after the test was over, we all cheered and stomped our hooves as Sentinel walked back to where we were standing on the field. I ran over to him and hugged him tightly. When we met each other's gaze, I noticed that his eyes had a certain sparkle in them. We stood there in silence. Will you two just kiss already? We both turned red as we realized that Motormouth was right behind us, Colonel at his side, snickering like a colt. When we both asked what they were talking about, the stern sergeant transformed into a comic book villain. He began cackling like a mad pony. We heard him saying between guffaws, Are you two that oblivious? We all know how you feel about one another. With the signs you two have been giving off, how could we not? Sentinel and I looked at each other, and then back at the crew in confusion. We didn't know what they were talking about at first. But after a few seconds, it suddenly dawned on us. We both turned away from each other, feeling embarrassed and shocked. We weren't sure what to do or say. Sentinel, is that true? Thoughts of the past months sluiced through my mind, remembering all the interactions I had with him. While he was training, I thought that I had seen him look over at me for a moment. But then when I looked at him, it seemed not to be the case. There were even many instances like that when we weren't doing any community service. I kept on fighting with my emotions, trying not to feel anything towards him. However, despite my attempts, there was a small voice in the back of my mind telling me that maybe there was a chance. Sentinel, is what the sergeant said true? He was silent for almost a minute until he confirmed that it was true. My cheeks burned like fire as I asked him how long he was feeling this way about me. He told me that he had feelings for me for quite a while. After another moment of silence, I asked him in a trembling voice, S sentinel d d do you still h have feelings for me? He hung his head and looked down at his forehooves before responding in a way I didn't expect him. He told me that he would be lying if he said no. He still had feelings for me. This surprised me. For so long, I thought that no stallion would ever look my way. Little did I know that there would be one under my nose the whole time. I tried to think of something else to say, but nothing came. That night, when we flew off for home, we were feeling both happy that our community service was over and sad that we had to say goodbye to our new friends. Sentinel and I flew beside each other in silence as the sights and sounds of the night surrounded us. After a few minutes, I managed to find my voice again. Sentinel, there's something I need to tell you. He looked over at me with an inquisitive expression in response. I met his gaze as we came to a halt. There was no turning back now. About what happened today on the field, when you told me that you have feelings for me, did you mean it? Sentinel responded with a yes and asked me why I would need to clarify that. I swallowed. Hard. 
It's because I also have feelings for you. For years, I've wanted to tell you how I feel. But I was too much of a coward to admit it. I was afraid of getting my heart broken again, like it has many times before. My eyes started to well up. After my breakup with Powerhouse, I thought that I would never find a stallion who cares about me. Then I got back in touch with you, and my thoughts started to change. I tried to bury my feelings for you, and pretend that they didn't exist. However, I knew that they would catch up to me in the end. I wiped away some stray tears and looked at him. I realized that he had tears in his eyes as well. It was his turn to talk now. He told me that he had the same reason for not telling me how he felt. It was also because of a relationship he had never forgiven himself for. Troki. He told me how deeply hurt he was after she broke up with him. He started to cry when I told him that he needed to forgive himself. That not only surprised me, but it left me completely speechless. Before that conversation, I don't think I've ever seen an emotional stallion like Sentinel in my life. And now, I don't think I ever will again. I tried to comfort him as much as I could, telling him that it wasn't his fault. I wiped his tears with my hoof and held him close. We hovered there for a little bit in silence once again, until we decided to continue to head for home. We flew for hours until we made it back to Manhattan. Once we were in the city, we looked at each other again. Sentinel moved closer to me, closed his eyes, and leaned his head in to reach mine. Catching on to what he was doing, I did the same, only to have our heads bang into each other. After an awkward first attempt, we finally kissed. Suddenly, he playfully tackled me to the ground. We let go of each other and started cuddling in the grass. We would have stayed there, but it was getting late. We got back up and took to the air once more. We were in the heart of the city, when suddenly, Sentinel took my hoof and started to guide my flight elsewhere. I looked at him inquisitively, wondering where he was taking me. I found out soon enough when we landed on top of a building. A few minutes after we landed, I suddenly heard the sounds of an orchestra. I searched for the noise until I came across a window that was ajar in front of us. I looked down and saw nothing but darkness at first. After a few seconds, we heard the sound of an audience clapping, and the lights came on below us. The orchestra started up again as three ponies began dancing and singing on stage. Suddenly, I heard a familiar voice down below and smiled when I saw Troki. Sentinel and I lay down, snuggled close, and watched the performance together. The first months of our relationship were pretty slow. It was awkward due to our troubled past. Even though we were clearly attracted to each other, we were both wounded warriors when it came to love. However, this problem didn't last forever. Our relationship started blooming day by day. For the first time in my life, I felt like I could finally be myself around a stallion without having to worry what he would think of me. I would tell him things that many ponies don't know about me. The same would go for him. Sentinel had started to become the one pony I trust besides my family and friends. 
we have always been there for each other. No matter what life has thrown at the two of us, we've always found a way to make it work. One example was when Crystal had to be checked into Calming Fields, a psychiatric home as a permanent resident. I won't go into too much detail, but I will say that it wasn't only one of the hardest decisions my parents ever had to make, but one they instantly regretted, even as they knew it was the right thing to do for their daughter. It was a devastating time for my family as a whole, and I was no exception. On the day the ponies from Calming Fields arrived to collect Crystal, I flew to the Manhattan Harbor, landed on the very edges of the docks, and cried until I felt my heart would burst. I knew my parents were struggling, and would have preferred my presence at home, but I just couldn't watch. It might have been a few minutes later. It might have been a few hours. Time had blurred since I started letting out my tears. I heard hoofsteps coming up from behind me. I turned and saw a sentinel looking at me with concern. Without a word, he sat next to me, hooves dangling off the edge alongside mine. He didn't say a word as he held me close, gently stroked my mane, and allowed me to vent all the emotions I had pent up inside me concerning my sister. It wasn't until the sun was starting to touch the horizon that I realized my own surprise. I've never let any pony touch my mane or tail except my parents. However, instead of pushing him away, I rested my head on his shoulder and relished in the moment. I think that was when I fell in love with him. That very moment. It was the first time in my life that I willingly and knowingly let any pony see my vulnerable side. Even Lavender had only ever seen that part of me by accident, when I was distracted, and I had to shut it away again as soon as I realized. Sentinel tried to comfort me, and I let him. And you know what? Instead of feeling weak for doing so, I felt much stronger than I had ever been before. It sounds weird, I know, but it was as if by letting him see the weakness inside me, I was getting rid of the weakness itself, like it had no hold on me anymore. In the days after that, he started to sit and wait for me outside the library every night, holding a single red rose for me in one hoof. It was a silly romantic gesture, but it made me blush and get all fluttery each time. He said it was because it made me smile, and he loved how pretty I am when I smile. He still does it from time to time, and it still makes me fluttery. Now, I know what you must be thinking. Caramel, how did Sentinel help you get your cutie mark? Well, since you already know where I am today, it's best not to repeat myself. One day, when Sentinel and I were taking our usual walk, we noticed a piece of parchment that was nailed to a nearby tree. It turned out to be an ad for a contest. It wasn't just any contest. It was a writing contest for the Manhattan Times. My face twisted into a mixture of fear and anger. Was this some kind of cruel joke? I started shaking. At that point, I hadn't written anything in years. Every time I tried to write a story or a poem, the inspiration would leave me as soon as it came. 
Seeing my reaction, Sentinel wrapped one of his wings around me, trying to comfort me. He told me that I should give it a try, and that maybe it will work this time. I was silent for a moment, my mind racing. I had no idea what I was going to do. After a while, I took Sentinel's words into consideration. Could I really do it? Could I actually win this competition and make something out of myself? Well, I guess I could try. I was still unsure of myself, but his faith in me had the same effect it had evoked on the docks the day Crystal was taken away. He made me feel stronger, more confident in my own abilities. If I was able to get my job over at the library after months of searching, maybe I could do this as well. The next day, after I'd filled out a form for the contest, I left the building feeling more nervous than I think I've ever been in my entire life. As I headed down the road, I tried to think of anything to cheer myself up, but nothing worked. I walked for what seemed like an hour, until I reached the park and collapsed onto a spot in the grass. Suddenly, I felt a forehoof wrap around me and pull me close. I looked up and smiled when I saw Sentinel. I rested my head on his downy chest and relaxed. He kissed the top of my head and rested his head on top of my own. After I calmed down a little bit, I sat myself down at a picnic table with a quill and a piece of paper in front of me. Sentinel sat beside me, trying to help me find something to write about. We sat there in silence for what seemed like hours. I sighed. I knew this was a waste of time. I was just about to give up and leave, when all of a sudden, Sentinel tapped on my shoulder. He took me by the hoof and led me to a large meadow. There were all kinds of flowers ranging from daffodils to lilies. However, what caught my attention was the large rose bush that stood in the middle of the field. I walked closer to it and inspected it. It had roses of every color growing on it. I didn't think that was even possible. It was one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. My eyes lit up as an idea popped into my head. I needed to write it down immediately. I was about to look for my writing equipment when I realized that Sentinel had them with him. I embraced him and took the utensils out of his hooves. I placed the parchment down on the ground and began writing. I was actually writing! For the first time in my life, I was able to write an idea down without forgetting it altogether. My smile grew wider as the pace of my writing got faster. After a few seconds, I placed my quill down and held the paper in my hooves. I, I did it, I said breathlessly. I, I did, did it! it. I, I did it! it. I started to bounce around the rose bush like I was a filly again. I stopped in my tracks when I reminded myself that Sentinel was still there, watching me. I turned a deep shade of red and hid beneath my wings. S -s sorry I squeaked. Instead of answering, Sentinel just stared at me. I put my wings down against my sides and looked back at him in confusion. 
Um, honey? What are you staring at? He said nothing, and pointed a hoof to my flank. Oh gosh, did I sit in gum or something? I turned around, and couldn't believe my eyes. On my flank was a red heart with a pencil in the center. Is, is this what I think it is? My voice trembled as I looked over at Sentinel. He had tears in his eyes as he slowly nodded. I thought for the longest time that I was a pony who would never find what she's good at. I thought that I would remain a blank flank for forever. I tried to hold back my tears but I found myself failing to do so. I do have a special talent. For so long, I thought that I didn't have a purpose. My special talent was under my nose the whole time. Sentinel wrapped his hooves around me as I cried into his shoulder. That night, Sentinel and I flew over to my parents' place. When I revealed my cutie mark to them, my mother was so happy that she screamed. They hugged me tightly and told me how proud they were of me. During the next few days, they planned the biggest cutesinera in Manhattan for me. It was a humongous party filled with all the party favors and sweets that any failure cult would love. It wasn't too different from your typical cute Sinera party. I got a lot of presents and a big strawberry cake with my name on it. All my friends and family were there to congratulate me. It was one of the happiest moments in my life. A week after my party, I came home from work and found out that I had received a letter from the Manhattan Times. I quickly opened it and began to read. Dear Caramel Breeze, Congratulations. We are pleased to announce you as the winner of our literary contest. You will be awarded with not just the 1,000-bit prize, but you will also have the chance to be one of our primary writers for the newest section of our paper, The Writer's Realm. We would like to meet with you and talk about this further. Please contact my secretary with the details of when would be the best time to attend a meeting at our head office. Yours sincerely, Cloudfront, CEO of the Manhattan Times. I shouted, bouncing around my apartment like a jumping bean. I couldn't believe it! I'd won! Despite having deadlines for the paper, I'm still able to have my job here in the library. That is a big plus for me. I love books, and I love reading. I wouldn't give those up for the world. Since then, I can definitely say that I can walk down the street with my head held high without worrying about getting dirty looks from ponies. I find myself to be a much happier pony now than I was before. My relationship with Sentinel has grown quite a bit during this year. We've been through quite a lot together. No matter what has come our way, we've always found a way to get past it. He's helped me become who I am today. If it wasn't for him, I don't know where I would be. Sentinel is the most amazing pony I've ever met, and I couldn't imagine what life would be like without him. And I hope we stay together for a long, long time. Well, it seems that I must end this tale. I don't want to keep him waiting. Until next time, this is Golden Rule, signing off.
Wow, is it that late already? I better get going and lock up for the night. Hey, beautiful. Happy Hearts and Hoof Day. Oh, honey, they're gorgeous. Thank you. Hmm. <laughs> Did you have a nice day? Mm-hmm. I was able to finish my first article. For Writer's Realm. What was it about? <laughs> I think you'll know what it's about once you see it. When does the paper come out? I believe that it should be out in a few days. It won't take that long, sweetie. I promise. I should be honored to spend that time with the author. Well, you're with me now. Oh! <coughs> Page Feather must have some stories to tell about your lunch breaks. <coughs> <laughs> I guess I forgot to eat lunch again. <gasps> no, say it is not so! Mine fair maiden is starving! <laughs> Does Eggplant Cavatelli sound all right? Hmm, that sounds wonderful. Then let's get you home, my lady. Mm-hmm. And a nice cup of tea would be nice. <laughs> Here, lean on me, sweetie. We'll take it slow.
That was The Rooster Colt and the Blank Flank. Phew! This one took a lot longer than I planned. Well, better late than never, right? I want to thank everyone who helped me out with this project. Out of all the fanfic productions I've made, this one is by far the longest reading I've ever done. It will be anyway, once I edit all the parts together and add some more pictures. I feel that the second part of this story was really naked due to the lack of visuals, but one thing at a time. I would like to thank the artists who contributed such fantastic artwork. You all did an amazing job, and I couldn't be more pleased with the results. I also want to thank the incredible actors who went out of their way to help me. I had gotten an all-star cast of some well-known VAs, and some who should be recognized more, to play not only the characters I created, but the characters a certain someone created. You all did an amazing job with your performances. Another thank you goes out to an artist friend of mine named Colonel Walther. I know you don't like being put in the spotlight, Colonel, but without you, I wouldn't have gotten to be with the amazing guy I'm with now. You also allowed me to use your characters in my story out of the kindness of your heart. I do sincerely hope that I was able to get your OC's personality right. I know that you've said in the past that I don't need to thank you when you have done things for me, but I do want you to be recognized for your work and what you have done for me personally. Another person I want to thank is the incredibly talented Scribbler. This woman has been a huge inspiration for a lot of EAs in this fandom, including myself. And it was an absolute honor getting to write this story with her. Scribbler, I'll admit that when I asked you to help me write this story, I wasn't expecting you to say yes. But when you did, I was ecstatic. You put so much heart and humor into this and had so many fantastic ideas. Thank you so much for what you've done for me. Without you, I don't think I would be where I am today. And finally, I would like to turn the attention to the very person who inspired me to make this production to begin with. My boyfriend, Sentinel. Honey, when I first got back in contact with you several years ago, I wasn't sure which way our relationship was going to go. Actually, we were both thinking that. Let's not kid ourselves here. At the time we met up again as adults, we had both come out of unsatisfactory relationships, feeling bitter and hurt. We were afraid of each other. During that point, I thought I was the most scared out of the two of us, which was probably pretty selfish of me to think at the time. I didn't realize how wrong I was until that call with Colonel. We have many similarities between us, but there are also huge differences. Throughout the near two years we've been together, I'm still happy to be with you. We've had our fights and disagreements now and again, and even some worrying times. However, despite all that, you've done so many good things for me. You've become one of the most supportive people in my life. You've always been there for me and always try to be honest with me when the situation called for it. Thank you so much for putting up with me for so long. There's so much I want to say about how fantastic of a guy you are, but it would take hours and I'm probably embarrassing you by putting you on the spot like this. So I think I'll get to the point. 
I really hope that you liked this entire production. I also hope that I was able to bring a smile to your face, seeing the fruits of my labor. I made this project to show you how much you mean to me and how far I've come. I love you, Sentinel. Hopefully this project will remind you of that each time you view it. Well, I think I've spoken long enough. Thank you all for watching. Until next time, I'm Rebon Jan. I'll see you guys later.